Remember, you are doing the six. You are doing the chorus. One, two. John. Tom's view. Chorus in. Four, four, rock chorus. One, two, two, four. We're going to the soft chorus. If you're in worship ministry and serving on a Sunday team, you know that one of the hardest things to accomplish is building unity. If you check our hearts, I'm sure we're all guilty of selfish tendencies, wanting to have our own way, which generally gets in the way of playing well in the band. How do we have the best live band experience on the worship team? Here's where I think we need to stop and consider the three things that help make the best live band experience. Number one, serve the team, not your ego. This is probably the biggest problem that we guitarists have in particular. Look, I get it. We spend hours on our tone, years on our craft, and we've arrived at a point where we have our sound. We can be protective about the way we sound and the forum posts about dissatisfaction with the front of house is proof of that. I had the perfect rig set up for this night of worship. I just got my PRS Custom 24 set up and ready to rock. I configured the tones on my HX Storm with the Strifecta. Nothing could be problematic except one major problem. Philip, our second electric guitarist, plays a PRS SE Stala and also had a HX Storm rig with similar amp tones too. We sounded the same. The situation could have gone in a couple of ways, one of which being, I could have insisted on using my rig, I could have bulldozed my way, but the problem of having two electric guitar rigs sounding the same was evident. Our combined sound was muddy. So I set aside that need for the musician seeking validation through gear, because that's what it is, and decided that it was more important that the tone blended better with the band instead of the muddy mess that it was because we had similar gear. Enter my grad studio jet and my trusty part go. Having crafted and wrote tested my tones at Sunday services, I was confident that the brightness and chime would provide a good contrast against the warm and round humbucker tones that Philip had. Excellent tone, by the way. Verse 1B, a loud verse 1B. Loud verse 1B. And a 1, 2, and 3, and 4. Gonna slow down and end. What is God asking you to do to serve your team? For me, that meant going out of my way to change my setup so it served the team better. Number two, serve the song, not your pride. The set list for the evening contains songs that didn't have two distinct electric guitar parts. In some songs, I was improvising parts which I had practiced at home before the rehearsal, and to be honest, it was injecting my flavor and style into the songs. Remember that problem I had with clashing tones? Now, I had the problem 
of clashing parts. It wasn't Philip's fault, let me be clear. It was me trying to be me, approaching the song as if it's a chance to show off my chordal and melodic prowess. This messiness didn't go unnoticed. Our worship leader Clovis could hear this problem in the EG layers because he was way out in front listening to the band during the rehearsal, which is a pro tip for worship leaders wanting to gauge how the band sounds from the front of house. You'll want to do this with wireless in-ear monitors so you can hear your music director better. Speaking of whom, the night's music director was the one and only TK. Hi everyone, welcome to Justin's all about worship guitar. I'm TK. I run a TikTok channel for my dog, and we have around 24,000 views on my latest cover. So please, I'm not the dog. Please, <laughs> please join me. Wait, wait, I got a picture of my dog. His name is Bobo. He's a five months Pomeranian. I miss him a lot. And I hope you guys can support him by following him on TikTok. Okay, it's at tanuki.tk. Just. <laughs> okay, so what I have is I usually use my main stage to power my keyboard. So the good thing about it is that I don't have to worry what keyboards that I know I'm going to play in which church or like which, which gear because as long as I have my main stage sounds, I'm going to get that sound that I want. So, by the way, this is not sponsored post, but if Grand Lab or, you know, Music France will sponsor me, my Instagram, I'll, I'll leave it at Insta uh, uh, Justin's bio below. Feel free to contact and I'm your guy. I'll, I'll be playing main stage for the rest of my life. Amen. Amen. Clovis's feedback post-rehearsal was that the EGs needed to sort out their parts and kudos to Philip, he was such a sport to have a quick meet after the rehearsal and follow up text the day after. So I set aside that pride in wanting to make my mark with the music and follow my worship leader's direction. If there was a mess that needed to be sorted out, there was a mess that needed to be sorted out. No buts no what ifs. This wasn't the time or the place to defend my creative choices. After hearing the recording of our rehearsal, which you should be doing by the way, I decided that Philip's parts were more true to the vibe of the songs, so unless there were distinct lead guitar parts, I wasn't going to be doing very much. In fact, there were many moments in the setlist that I was just worshipping. Low chorus, soft chorus.
What is God asking you to give up to serve your team? For me, that meant relinquishing my musician pride and giving up my improvised parts to serve the team better. Number three, serve the Lord, not yourself. Ultimately, serving the Lord is what it's all about. This last point is the most important one of all, but it's the hardest to define as well as the easiest to fake. Anyone can put up a front, even a smile, and say that it's all about serving the Lord. But there are going to be little things that will prove and test that resolve and not just the previous two points. Here are some questions that can help check your heart. When the worship leader cuts out that big guitar solo and instead calls for a breakdown, what do you feel? Anger and frustration that your practice went down the drain? Or are you trusting that he's tuned into the spirit and there's a moment that the band shouldn't be rushing over? When the music director calls out your instrument to do something more or less, or when he calls to watch your tempo, what's your first reaction? Oi, why am I being singled out? It's not me who's fudging my parts. Or are you trusting that he's tuned into what the song needs in the moment and that his call serves the song better? When a younger musician talks to you and wants to sort out messy parts, what comes up first? the defensive walls to guard your creative choices, or the desire to be a part of the team and fully commit to sorting out your parts, even to the point of playing less. I'm not saying I have it all together, far from it. I'm a work in progress. But that's the wonderful thing about ministry. It's never do or die, all or nothing. It's part of your walk with Jesus, your personal discipleship. And if you're open and willing, Jesus will guide you through the areas of your heart that he wants you to change. Trust me, it takes years. And I hope that these tips will help save the younger worship minister a ton of heartache and unpleasant ministry experiences. Take it from me as one who's been doing this a long time, the way to have the best live band experience is to live out Romans 12 verse three, which says, for by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. Let us continue to serve the Lord. Don't die down. Now over to you, which point resonated with you the most? Which point do you struggle with the most? Sometimes even just typing it down can help the soul process and let me assure you, this is a safe space. I'll delete any comments that violate my no judgment zone. I love to hear your stories, ideas and thoughts in the comment section below. That's it for me, thanks for watching this video. Here on my channel, I'm committed to helping you get the best tone out of your gear as well as playing your best for the Sunday service. If you're a worship musician on the same journey, consider liking, subscribing 
hitting that bell icon and sharing this video with someone whom you know could benefit. Want to see more of the encounter? I did a previous video here chronicling my first experience playing with these wonderful brothers and sisters and I talk about three bad habits that guitarists need to be aware of as they prepare for a night of worship like this. Do check out their encounter and their socials as well as our beloved music director TK's in the description box below. Until next time, I'm Justin and I'm all about worship guitar.